Hey guys, how's it going? It is the end of the day. It's a beautiful, it's been a beautiful day. It's been like 70 degrees out. Brent was outside, he got the lawn mode. I got a couple projects done and the weather is perfect. The only problem is the mosquitoes are out and they are here to attack. <laughs> um, but that's right, I am, I've got long sleeves on. It's the end of the day though, but it's, it was still 70 degrees today. So it's kind of warm. <laughs> the six videos that we did were our Q and A, um, well, I'd be posting fewer videos and then we did a planting experiment gravel install plant shopping gravels done and then one year celebration of Janie and I Officially being friends <laughs> So good week and it was a good look back also. It was a very long week I've had some kind of big changes happening at work. I'm not I'm, I've changed where I'm working and um, I'm still only working three days a week and there's a train coming. <laughs> We're gonna wait <laughs> Anyways the trains gone now we did our six videos. It was a good week. The chickens are being crazy. There's, there's all the things going on right now. <laughs> um, let's just get into the questions this week. I'm gonna try to make it quick because I am getting destroyed by mosquitoes. My legs keep getting attacked, so you're probably gonna see me swatting around like a crazy person. <laughs> Um, first video that we did was the Q&A from last week. First question on that video was from Sonia and she had said, what are those plants behind you? I love them and live in Texas. Will they grow there? Those behind me, not this week, um, in that Q&A, those were Arborvita and I don't know if they'll grow in Texas. We're in zone nine. You'd have to look up your zone. Arborvitas are rated up to a zone eight, but I'm in California and California and Texas are a bit different than each other. Um, uh, I, you know, I've gone to Texas quite a few times and I've never seen them there, so I, I'm not exactly sure. I would look up if you can grow them in Texas. Like, I would, you have to do a Google search. I'm not sure about that one. Sorry. Next question on that video is from Melinda, and she had said, It's hard to pinpoint a time. Um, it varies by topic, and she's, she's talking about the um, fact that I had asked how long you guys prefer videos to be. <laughs> These mosquitoes. Um, Anyways, but a 30 minute video is fine with me. I do all of my seeds on Baker X too. Have you considered soil blocking? You can start so many seeds in a little space. I have thought about it, but I just don't think it's for me. Um, I tend to bottom water everything and I leave everything actually sitting in water. And if I soil blocked, then I'm afraid that like the, the blocks would just like disintegrate because I do leave them in water. And with soil blocking, I know that you have to put like the appropriate amount of water when you are soil blocking and I don't don't do that. So I'm going to say it's probably not going to be for me, um, but Bootstrap Armor does sell soil blocking um, kits if you are interested in soil blocking. Next question on that video is from Rosalie and she had said, hi Robbie, your videos are great. I don't care if they're an hour or 30 minutes. I enjoy them all. What is your timeline on the reno? I'm sure it'll look great. Happy gardening. The timeline on the reno, I'm hoping to get a huge majority of it done this year. We'll see what happens. Um, I would like to get all of the concrete removed from the property and I would like to get all of the metal edging installed. And I would like to get the back area, which is the area that I'm sitting, um, started to have the design come together. The fence will be done this year. And um, I think that's kind of where I'm gonna draw it. Those are my expectations for the year, is to get some of the hardscape in, but not all of it. Um, we wanna build a deck, and I think that might be pushing into next year, or maybe like fall or winter time of this year. So not, um, I don't know, I, you know, my plans are always so fluid too. <laughs> <laughs> My mind always changes. <laughs> so we'll see what actually happens. Um, but the plan is at minimum the fence and then all of the metal edging on the property and to get the gravel redone. We got the tree removed already. And I think I mean, like those are kind of the big ones that start to get like the pathways, the foundations like in place. If a bunch of planting doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. I might just like deck the whole property out with annuals for one year. Um, I mean, some of these annuals I can winter over, no problem, but we'll see what happens. So timeline, like one year, maybe two at most. And honestly, like my timeline for even staying at this property is like two to three years longer. And then I would like to be able to move and expand and have a ton of property and be able to have some animals and have landscape areas. Like my ideal, <laughs> my ideal property is to have like, 
not mosquitoes on my face. My ideal property is to have like five acres. And so when we buy five acres, I mean, I'll be there forever. And I think that the timeline on that is gonna be like 10 or 15 years. So I hope you guys want to stick around because two to three years on this property and like 10 to 15 years at least on the next one. The next video that we did was planting out seedlings before my last frost and experimenting and a uh, slight update, they started to burn. <laughs> <laughs> it got hot under those glass domes that I put. Like I said, today was 70 degrees and we've had a few other days that have been really hot and I should have taken those glass domes off in the days that it was 70 because under those glass domes heats up extremely hot and I didn't take them off. So some of them started to burn. I did take them off and um, I mean, we're, we're so close to my last frost date that it doesn't even matter at this point. <laughs> but I think that it bought me a little bit of time. So we'll see. First question on that video is from Wendy, and she had said, I do love this idea, but I'm wondering about the watering situation. Did I miss you watering these when you planted them in the bed, and how often will you water them? I didn't water them when I put them in the bed because I knew that we were supposed to have rain the next day, and we had just had rain before, so the soil was already kind of wet. So I didn't, um, I didn't water them in that day. I actually haven't even watered them yet. Our irrigation is off, and we've had rain, and we've had hot days, and then we get rain. So they've been like well taken care of. And as far as as we get into the season they will be watered every single day and the days that we hit over 100 they're going to be watered twice a day the next question on that video was from proud mama and she had said robbie don't know if you had said but did you get to harvest any grapes how did they taste do they produce first year so these grapes that we have are about three years old now and um, they did produce grapes they did not taste very good <laughs> when i bought them i knew absolutely nothing i just thought okay grapes like red grapes or green grapes i don't even i think they're green grapes they were green and I was like, green grapes, I love green grapes. So I bought green grapes, I didn't know the variety of them, I just planted it, thought it was a great idea. It was not a great idea. I think that they're grapes that are used for like making wine or something, they were so bitter. <laughs> so um, my next door neighbors um, down the street, they grow grapes on their vines and um, they just bring us grapes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull those ones out because they were not it. <laughs> Next question on that video is from Judy and she had said, do you get tomato hornworms? If you do, plant basil around your tomato plants. The smell of the basil masks the smell of the tomatoes. Huh. I didn't know that. We do get hornworms. Um, we don't get them like in like abundance. I think at most I've only ever seen like two, maybe three on our property. And so I usually just pull them and like feed them to the chickens. But I think I'm gonna try that because I would like to grow a lot of basil this year. Next question on that video was from Sheila and she had said, are you saying loofah like the sponge? I am absolutely saying loofah like the sponge. We are growing loofah sponges. Um, a lot of people think that they are like grown in the ocean. They're actually a gourd and what you're saving is the like fibers on the inside of the loofah. And so we're gonna be growing loofahs. I've done it before. I have a video all about growing loofahs and um, yeah, so I'm really excited to be growing loofahs again this year. They get super massive though. Like you need a ton of space to be able to grow them. Next question on that video is from Francis and they had said, what does hardening off mean? Hi Robbie. Hi. Um, hardening off, it means that you need to get your plants accustomed to the temperatures that are outside. They're not used to it and they're also not used to the like UV rays of the sun. So they need to become more accustomed to that. So when you harden those, so when you're hardening off your seedlings, you need to bring them out for the first time and you'll put them somewhere in a shaded location and you'll leave them out there for an hour and then you bring them back inside. And then the next day you'll take them outside and you'll leave them out there for, you know, two or three hours in a shaded location. And then you bring them back inside and you do it for like at minimum a week and you bring them out there and eventually you let them like stay the night outside and it's kind of like the scariest moment because the first night that they stay the night outside you're like okay are they gonna survive in the morning and you go check in the morning and they've made it because you properly hardened them off if i were to just take the seedlings that i have inside they're not used to the uv rays outside and they're not used to the temperatures they're used to the inside temperatures so if i brought them out here and planted them they would be in such shock because it's so hot and the uv rays are so intense that it would just burn and kill the plants. Next question on that video is from Carmen and she had said, good morning, Robbie. Great idea to start planting the tomatoes and loofah seedlings. Question, why didn't you plant the rest of the tomatoes since they seem to be doing so well? I know you have the ones inside, but these would be stronger from the beginning to outside, right? Or am I wrong about this? Okay, so I don't want all of one variety of tomatoes. I mean, there's a chance that we could get a frost and it could kill the seedlings that I planted out and then I would have zero of those tomato varieties. So that's why I'm also growing some inside, it's an insurance policy. But um, 
I also didn't want to plant all of them out because I don't want that that many tomato plants. I only want one of that tomato plant. I also plan to grow um, Amish paste. I also plan to grow Bonnie's Best and a cherry tomato. So I would like to grow four tomatoes in total. That's the ultimate plan. But um, if I had planted all of the like six or eight that I had left, then I would have I would have way too many. But getting them planted out now definitely has made them, will make them so much stronger and they'll be able to take off a lot faster. Last question on that video is from Anne and they had said, Robbie, I noticed that you pinched back the tomato seedlings. Is the purpose to promote their growth? Is it necessary to pinch back the seedlings of any plant you were growing, like flowers, etc.? Those tomatoes, I didn't pinch them back. There was two seedlings growing in each like pod and I don't want two of them I only want one so I just pinched the one back that's the only reason I did that um, and like tomatoes you can pinch them and then they'll start branching you don't have to pinch them I don't pinch them um, and then for flowers and things like that there are certain ones like snapdragons you do want to pinch them after they have two to three sets of their true leaves so you pinch it and you leave the three leaves and then um, it'll start branching from there and it'll give you a ton of stems. There's, there's a whole bunch of flowers that need to be pinched that'll give you a bunch of blooms. Next video that we did was the gravel install and the first question on that video was from Mystic Firefly and they had said, Robbie, can you talk about some of the prices of the various gravels? I need to get some too. How exciting for you. Um, any idea how much the Domalite cost? Um, I... I can't talk about how much the other prices are because I don't know what they are, but the one that we did buy was $79 a yard with a $90 delivery fee, and I'm assuming that the other ones are roughly about the same price per yard. We bought four yards, and um, that's probably going to be not quite enough. <laughs> Brent said to buy five, and I said, mm, I think I only want to buy four, and I should have bought the five. We bought four yards plus the delivery fee, and it was like 500 and something dollars is what we ended up spending on the gravel. Um, so worth it. Do I wish that we had a truck and a trailer to save that $90? Yeah, because then I would have bought five yards. <laughs> you also have to remember that I do live in the middle of nowhere, and so the people delivering the gravel to us had to drive uh, like 20 20 minutes just to get to where we are and then they had to drive 20 minutes back so that's why our delivery fee was $90. He said that delivery fee normally is not that high it's just because I live in the middle of nowhere and so that's why we paid so much. I had to switch cameras the other one died. <laughs> it overheated. Fabulous. Next question on that video was from a friend and they had said um, quick question as I am new to your channel what is the dry patch of grass in the middle of your yard? was a tree there. P.S. Love the reality of your videos. Okay, so we have three patches in our yard. <laughs> um, one of them, the big one, is where a tree was. We just got that removed a couple months ago. And then the other one is where we had some dusty miller growing. We did a whole flower farm on our property. I had thousands of flowers that I was growing and um, I didn't remove the dusty miller when I had removed everything else. And so we took it out last and it was over the winter time and I just, there hasn't been enough time for the grass to grow back there. And the other one is where we buried our dog Wesley at. So three patches on the property and the biggest one is the tree, which I think is the one that you're talking about. Next question on that video is from Miss Disney fan and they had said, I love your joy, honesty, and silliness. Am I the only one that noticed the cafe lights? When did you do that? And that has been up there for a while, <laughs> like, I don't know, a year after Last I've been up there? Last spring, so almost a year. I did a video on it. <laughs> They've been up there for a while. We've really, really enjoyed them. They are installed the same way. Okay, kicking the camera. They're installed the same way that I installed Janie's at her house, which is on a wire, so that way they're nice and sturdy. Last question on that video was from Cynthia, and she had said, at least the rain kept you cool, right? <laughs> Looks great. Will you take out all of the concrete in your backyard? The rain kept me really cool, but then I came inside and Brent was like, let me turn the heater on. And I was like, no, no, because now that I've stopped moving, I'm hot. <laughs> um, but we will be removing all of the concrete in the backyard, except for the area where the gazebo is. That's going to stay because we're going to just build a deck over that area. So in the next couple of months, I'm hoping to get all the concrete removed. We'll see because that was a lot of work but I'm definitely gonna need to like rent a jackhammer to like get all of that taken care of because I'm not gonna do it by a sledgehammer. The next video that we did was my self controls unmatched plant shopping, which wasn't really plant shopping because I didn't buy a single plant. Um, first question on that video was from Shelby and she had said, she was fun. How cool is it to go into that greenhouse? Did it smell like tomatoes? it did smell like spring. <laughs> it didn't quite smell like tomatoes, except for when she started brushing her hands over it, then you could smell the like tomato leaf smell, but it smelled so good. It smelled like, like earthy after it rains. 
the, uh, it just smelled so good. It smelled like spring was here. Next question on that video is from Deborah, and she had said, Robbie, the forsythia in the front, could you try cutting them and shaping them into topiary before removing them? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take cuttings from them and I am going to shape, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my own cuttings and do like long sticks, put them in some soil and see if they'll root, and then see if I can turn those into topiary forsythias. Uh, I, I just want one just to try it. I mean, I love forsythia, but I don't have all the room in the world here. And so I really want plants that have big impact for a longer period of time than forsythia has. Forsythia has like a very short window that they're like super pretty. So, so I need things that have like a longer bloom time and that are prettier for a longer period of time. But if I can do like it in topiary and I can just put it in a pot and then I can just move the pot around as I want. Um, and if I can take a cutting from the one that I have and do it for free, then it's a win. So I'm gonna try it, we'll see what happens. Last question on that video is from Billy Joe Bob. <laughs> and they had said, don't forsythia throw up a ton of growth from the base, wouldn't that turn into a normal bush quickly? Um, they do, so I think, I mean, anything that's topiary or being trained, it takes a lot of maintenance. So if you know that going into it, you just know that you have more maintenance on that shrub and you just have to take care of anything that starts shooting up from the base. Um, but the eventual goal is to get it to grow on that top section. And there's a chance that those ones that were at that nursery were grafted onto something else, onto a different rootstock. So that way they don't start shooting up a whole bunch of runners. So I'm gonna try it with the ones that we have on the property and see if I can get it done. And what happens, I'm gonna experiment, um, but I can't say anything for the ones that were at the nursery. The next video that we did was Finished installing the gravel. It's so good. Oh, and I'm so glad that it's done because it looks so good. First question on that video was from Jeanette and she'd said, do you have a different spot for the trash cans? We don't. We have tried it in multiple different spots on the property and that really is the best spot for the trash cans to go. It is unfortunate because we do see them all the time, but um, at the end of the day, it is what it is. We have trash cans and that's real life so that is the best spot for them to go um, especially with ease to where we need to like wheel them out next question on that video is from shelby and she had said that looks so good it's totally inviting and i love that edging thank you the metal pokies sticking up from the temporary fencing gives me so much anxiety to the dogs not ever try to jump it is there a way to flip those sections like by the espalier there's no way to flip them that's where they've been cut um, and our dogs don't jump them they've never tried they've never even I mean, like Freya, if we put like something that's like this high up, she never jumps it. Sadie is the one who will jump it if it's like this tall. So we have to make it taller because Sadie will not jump over anything that's tall, but she'll jump if it's like a short barrier. So we have to make it like a, a tall barrier and then Sadie won't even try to jump over it. If there was a chance that I thought that they were gonna jump over it, then I would definitely not use the like sticks poking up like that I would freak out if anything ever happened to them I would feel so guilty so nope I don't see them ever even trying to attempt doing that so I'm not worried about it next question on that video is from Deborah, and she had said Robbie it looks so beautiful I just love it are you going to use compost or mulch wouldn't the brown or black mulch look so great there I cannot wait to see some tulips in the finished area so exciting the tulips are coming up and I cannot wait to show you guys the tulips. I need to move the bricks and then I will be mulching everything. We use the Garden Time Pathway mulch when we mulch. It's a very natural mulch and it's super pretty. It breaks down by the end of the year so you don't get the big huge chunks. And personally, I try not to go with the, any of the like dyed ones. I just don't wanna add those chemicals into my garden. And honestly, I just see them fading by like halfway through the summertime, where if you just buy natural mulch, it just stays really pretty the entire time. Next question on that video is from Karen, and she had said, will you be painting the inside of the fence black by the bins? This may help hide them. Love the improvements. This time there's no plan to paint it, um, but after a couple of you guys recommended it, I started thinking about it and I think that we probably should paint it black. Um, I think we just need to finish this fence, this beautiful fence right here behind me first. So at this time, there's no plans to paint it, um, but maybe when we pull the paint sprayer back out, we will paint it because I do think that it would camouflage those trash cans. I did. We just had painted it white and then I just didn't even think about it. Last question on that video was from Malika and they had said, the gravel pathway makes a huge difference. 
can I suggest widening the flower beds behind the house and moving the pergola further back into the garden so that it looks bigger and utilizes more space? We will be doing that when we build a deck. The only problem is that we can't move it back too far because our clean out for the septic system is like right there. It's probably, we'll be able to move it back like three feet, but not much further than that. So that is the plan when we build a deck is to be able to move it back further. Um, it's just time. <laughs> <laughs> the last video that we did was it's officially been one year and that was to celebrate Jamie and I being friends officially for one year. It kind of snuck up on me. I wasn't I wasn't prepared for it. I wasn't even going to upload a video that day, but um, I got home and I had like, look, I was like, okay, well, what did I post a year ago about this time? And it just happened to be the video that I had done with Jamie. And so I thought, you know what, instead of not posting a video, let's re-upload it because not a lot of people had seen that video and um, it looked like you guys really enjoyed it. We had such a great time hanging out the first time. We instantly like clicked with each other. It was so, it, it was a very unique bond that we just like instantly made with each other. And I'm so glad that it's lasted because it has been so fun and we have done so many things together and we have so many more things coming up and I cannot wait to share with you guys all the things that we have planned for this year because there's a lot of stuff that we have planned. And then I just pulled two questions from that video um, at the time of filming this. There was only two, so I just pulled those. The first one is from Bridget and she had said, you two are so fun to watch. What are those gorgeous seedlings behind you? Those all ended up turning into the flower field that, that we did. Um, it was like Scabiosa, it was Zinnias, Cosmos, Bells of Ireland, Lysianthus, it was everything. I had Dahlias started from seed in that video. There were so many different seeds. You'll have to go back and like find the video that we did from a year ago. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. That I did tons of videos about starting our flower farm. So I recommend that if there's ever a day that I don't post a video and you do want to see a video, go back and watch some of the old ones because there's some really good ones about things that we've done on the property and you can see how it's evolved from last year just to this year. And the last question on the video is from the Lares and they had said, you both are so cute, love the energy. Um, were you successful at growing Bells of Ireland? If so, what did you do? I did get Bells of Ireland to grow. My problem is that once I got them growing, I then planted them in the shadiest patch of the flower farm and they need full sun. So I got blooms on them. They were only about this tall though was my problem. So I did get them done. Um, it's best to pre-soak your seeds for 24 hours if you can and then they, the seeds come to a point and if you can file down that point just a little bit and soak them then you're going to have the best success at getting them to germinate i'm not growing any this year but i did get them to grow so full sun a ton of water and soak those seeds for a minimum of 24 hours after you file down the tip of them that's my only tips for growing bells of ireland so that is going to be it for the video you guys i hope that you enjoyed it i'm going to go inside because um we are all being eaten by mosquitoes right now me brent and Jalen are all out here filming this video and uh the dogs everyone's getting eaten by mosquitoes even after the middle of the video Jalen went to the store to go buy some off and honestly like i think they branded this stuff the wrong this should be called on because the mosquitoes are going nowhere so we're going to go inside because we're being attacked viciously i hope you enjoyed the video i'll see you in the next one bye guys mm -hmm.